Okay, a quick update video, more for myself to keep track of what I've been doing and what bits I've been removed, but if any of this is interesting to anyone else, uh, it serves that purpose too. So I've only been working for less than two hours. I've already got quite a lot done. Um, I was pretty anxious at the beginning. It looked like an impossible task for someone who's never really done this before, but once you get started taking bits off, it's not too bad. So. First thing I did was remove all the exterior panels. They were quite easy, just using uh, Allen keys. I've done this a few times now, so they all came off. Two on each side, um, just makes it easier to work on. Uh, at some point, I need to get a stand under the bottom of the bike to lift it up, so I need to remove the exhaust. Um, the first step to get access to the head bolts on the exhaust easier was to get the radiator off. That's pretty easy now that I've done it once. You just uh, remove the coolant overflow bottle from the bottom, which is just one key. You remove the fan connector, you unplug, there's another electrical connector, um, which I can't remember what it is. Oh, sorry, the horn and the fan connectors, that's it. You pull off the little pipe for the overflow bottle. You disconnect the two coolant pipes. Um, I use a pair of Stilsons and just pulled them off once the bolts had come off. And then the whole radiator is just held in by one bolt on that end, and then the whole thing pulls off sideways. So that was worth doing. Um, before I did all that, I drained as much of the coolant as I could, which is very easy. There is a coolant drain plug purposely built for this, which is just there. So I removed that, took the coolant out, and then put it back on. Um, that was all pretty easy. And the head bolts came off um, quite easily, just two on each stud. Um, that was quite nice. It doesn't look too much more corroded than it was last time I looked at this. Uh, and I've just started to remove the exhaust. Now, last time, I very stupidly, the... Uh, the sensor that plugs into the exhaust there, I just twisted it round and round till it came off. But this time I realised it was much easier. There's a panel here, which is just two bolts. Undo them and then you pull it out and then you've got access to all the connectors, the brake pipes and everything under there, uh, which makes just unclipping connectors and stuff much easier. Uh, now I'm going to remove the rest of the exhaust and maybe get it up onto a stand. And with the exhaust off, I'm pretty happy with this for two hours work. Quite a lot done there, and it was all pretty easy to be honest, especially if you've done a few jobs on these bikes already. Uh, one thing I've learned is with these hex little screws, you have to be quite robust with them. Just make sure the Allen key's firmly in there, and then just you can put a quite a lot of strength behind it, and they all they all come undone. Um, and all these exterior parts, they unbolt, and they do expose the innards, uh, and it's actually quite been quite easy touch wood to work on so far. Um, and as you can see, if I take a step back, once the tank's off, which won't take very long either after I drain the fuel, it should all be pretty exposed and hopefully should be fairly straightforward. Right, I'm carrying on having a bit more of a crack at this and as you can see, making some pretty steady progress still. Uh, thanks to having all the tools I need laid out quite neatly and having a place for everything, it's not proving too difficult. I'm following the Haynes manual I've shown in another video, and I'm finding it very useful. Uh, getting the fuel tank off was very straightforward, using its advice. Now that I've got that tank off, I can see the frame itself in a bit more detail. I was kind of hoping that this front frame would be separate to the rest of the bike, so that I would only have to send that part away to be strengthened. But now that it's in bits, I can see that it's all welded together right from the headstock all the way along right through to the back of the bike itself. So this bike is going to have to come completely to pieces. So it's going to be quite a dismantling task. Now that the fuel tank's off, I've noticed a few other slightly disturbing things. You may have seen in my other video where I complained about the powder coating on the swing arm that I got redone under warranty. Well, now the tank's off, I can see that the powder coating's not really that great underneath the fuel tank either. It's starting to peel off, starting to rust underneath. Bear in mind this bike's only done about 9,000 miles. And it's only about two, well, it was only about two years old, two and a half years old, coming off there as well, so... Maybe if I get that treated, but that kind of confirms my suspicions that the finishes on this bike are not as good as they should be. On some areas it's fine, it seems pretty pretty good a lot 
among these worlds and things here but as you can see here it's bubbling peeling and this is an area that i haven't touched and that you can't maintain either without stripping the fuel tank down which you wouldn't want to be doing every year as part of your winter maintenance um, and also where the frame bent which is the whole reason i'm doing this uh this slight it does seem to flake off quite easily around there as well so Yamaha you you lose a few points for surface finish I know I get a few comments saying oh yeah all these issues are just because you don't maintain the bike poor maintenance blah 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 but I do think there are a few quality control issues where they've tried to cut corners on materials with some of these bikes so that's all I'm going to do for today uh, thought so far is that this first bit's been easier than I expected. The next stage will be to lift the bike up. Um, it's quite a daunting task knowing I've got to strip everything off the frame as well. That means all the electrics, the wiring loom and also the brake system, which on modern bikes is quite complicated. And then of course fit it all back once it's all done. But the only way to do this is to keep cracking on with it, which is what I'm going to do in the next video. Thanks for watching, see you next time.